I went about my evening work with trembling steps as I walked down the stairs. These are the very same words that Harry Jacob said in her autobiography, Incidents in the Life of a Slave Girl. Harry Jacobs was born in Edenton, North Carolina in 1813. She became a house slave at the age of 15, a property of Dr. Norcon, a cold-hearted man who always wanted his way. He was a crafty man and always accomplished his purposes. Dr. Norcom attempted to have sex with her on multiple occasions, but her very strong personality kept her from becoming a victim. Today, we have Harry Jacobs with us. Thank you for joining me. Thank you for having me. I'm honored to be here. I have your book here, Incidents in the Life of a Slave Girl. Can you please tell me what it's like? living in the Norcom household? Living in the Norcom household was hell. I was sold to them when I was only 15. I was toiling every day. Every single day I had to wake up knowing that Dr. Norcom would sexually harass me. I was so young, I did not know how to deal with it. I was alone. I didn't have anyone else. I was just a property, not a human being. If life was so horrible, why didn't you think about running away sooner? Running away wasn't a choice for me. I had nowhere to go. I could not think about my grandmother being involved in this. It was just so hard. It's not that easy. In your book, you mention how beauty is a curse. What does that mean? When you're a slave, if a woman has a little ounce of beauty in, her, beauty in her. She's an easy target for her master. Did Miss Mrs. Norcom know about Mr. Norcom's interest in you? Of course she did. If she didn't, she would have been really stupid about it. But she just chose to ignore it and took her anger out on all the slaves. There was one time that she spit in all the slaves' food in order for them not to be able to eat. She was just, I guess, lonely and angry, and she couldn't do anything about it. Pardon me, I felt sorry for her, rather than myself. Many people will see your decision to leave your children behind as something awful. What pushed you to run away? What pushed me to run away? Yeah. That was something that I had to deal with for the rest of my life, choosing to run away from my kids. It was the only thing that could save them. Save them from the plantation and... I just... I know that a mother wouldn't do that to their children, but it was the best thing for them. In order for their dad to buy them from the plantation, it was a risk that I was willing to take. Later on, you would end up going to live in New York. What was life their life? Was it better? It was better, but it was also bad. I did not know anyone there. I was alone. I had to start a new life knowing that my kids weren't with me. But being away from the Norcom household and slavery made it even better because I would started a new life and a new beginning. When you escaped and left your children behind, where did you go? I went to an old white woman's house. She is willing to hide me in her attic. She too could have got in trouble since her husband is a slave owner. She hid me in her attic for seven long years. I was alone and battled the long winter nights and the hot summer days. How did you deal with all the chaos that surrounded you? There were times in my life where I couldn't deal with it. I just wanted everything to end. But hope is what kept me alive and got through this. Would you go back and change your decision of running away? No, I wouldn't. I feel like God has a plan for everyone. And everything happens for a reason. And this is his plan for me. This is a story of Harriet Jacobs, a fighter, a survivor, and a strong-willed woman who never gave up on hope no matter what.
Lord, I don't know which way 